welcoming to the studio Brian Johnson of the uh, Fulton County Community Foundation, Northern yeah. Indiana County. Yes. Northern Indiana Community Foundation. All of the above. All of the above. Yes. How are you? Pretty good. And it was, I think Mr. Rogers said it's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Was the moon still agree. up when you came over? It was. It oh, was. Man, it was a cool. it yeah. was a pretty pretty cool morning this morning. And then it the was. fog and the sunrise yeah. Yeah. and wonderful day in Rochester. Yeah. So, yeah. So well we've got a lot of things going on at the community foundation right now. Um, just a few things I wanted to highlight. Um, we're working on a um, program called Promise Indiana, um, Promise Fulton County. What this program does is help um, students in Rochester and Caston create 529 college savings accounts. Um, of course, if students start saving early, um, it helps them get a head start on college and, and this is one of the tools that's available. So what's happening is this program is, is helping students um, kindergarten through sixth grade um, create college savings account um, and like I mentioned it's Rochester and Cast and Tippecanoe Valley is part of um, Kosciuszko County that was able to take advantage of this program um, last year so um, the goal is to help students create these savings account help them learn about the value of college at a young age and and start planning for the future so um, the part of the program is community matching dollars so we are working with different organizations to provide help sponsor our classroom, help sponsor kids um, through this program, um, and it's really been a wonderful thing. Of course, the foundation granted um, supporting this as well, um, so there are some funds out there. So if you're interested, um, look for um, on the internet Promise Fulton County, um, and you'll bring up a website that has some details about. Is that an um, ORG program. webpage? It is. Okay. It is. So check that out and you can find out some of the details about the logistics of if you're a parent of a student, how to create that. If you're somebody that's interested in helping sponsor a classroom or children, um, you can find details about how to do that as well. The other thing I wanted to mention, um, the Honeywell Foundation. Last month we had um, a representative from the Honeywell Foundation and they have actually created a new endowment fund in Fulton County. Of course, a lot of people realize the Honeywell Center um, is yeah. is in Wabash, and that's that's part of what the Honeywell Foundation does. But they also do some outreach programs. This spring, we're going to see some banners pop up around downtown Rochester. That's part of an art contest that Sciota's Eye has um, worked out the details on, and, and the Honeywell Foundation will be helping them with that in the future. Will this be an adult art contest? It is actually for um, students, students at Rochester, Caston, and Tippecanoe Valley. Um, the art teachers will work with their students to create designs, and then um, the Akron Area Art League will have a, a contest to judge those designs, and the winners will be um, created banners and hung in downtown Rochester. And then the other neat part is some of the ones that don't win the design contest um, will be displayed in area libraries. So at the Akron Library, the Rochester Library, and the Fulton Library, some of the some of the designs that weren't chosen for the banners will be displayed. So um, I'll be looking forward to see what the kids create um, and look forward to that this spring. But um, the Honeywell Foundation created an endowment fund and they also have a um, donor that has offered to match gifts of um, a total up to five thousand dollars in matching funds available for any gift to the Honeywell Foundation. Um, the neat part about this is the Honeywell Foundation has said if you make a gift to our endowment fund then the donor that makes that gift can choose where that matching portion goes. So if the donor has a fund and they like the Honeywell Foundation they don't have to choose between making a gift to the Honeywell Foundation endowment and their own fund. So they can make a gift to the Honeywell Foundation fund and then choose to have the match go into their own fund. So if somebody's planning on making a year-end gift and, and would like to support um, the Honeywell Foundation and the education pieces that they do in our community, um, let us know because we can make that happen. It's a, a wonderful opportunity for our community. Um, and this fund will be used to support um, some of the ongoing education activities um, art and music and um, things that the Honeywell Foundation supports in Fulton County. So it's, it's pretty exciting to um, talk about that. Um, I don't want to get political, but one thing that I wanted to talk about is um, we've heard the word foundation be a big mm. buzzword through yeah. this last election cycle. 
and um, so I just wanted to mention um, the Community Foundation. Um, some people may not realize the difference between a community foundation and a private foundation, which private foundations were kind of what was in the news. Um, but the neat thing about a community foundation is the fact that we are a public charity. Um, our board consists of individuals from our community. Um, one thing that we really strive to do is um, have people that represent our whole community. So when we look at Fulton County, we look at bearing, being very strategic about having people from the different townships in our community be part of our group and, and people that um, really live, work, and play in our community be a part of this. Um, so it's, it's wonderful to see how people come together. Of course, you get a wide, diverse group of individuals, different experiences that really add to the, the richness of our board and um, information um, available to our group. Um, another thing about our foundation is, is we try and be transparent. So we have a lot of our information that's available to the public, um, things like financial information. Um, we, can, we can provide information to people as they are interested in that. And something else that's been a big deal um, that we just completed the process is um, the Council on Foundations, which is a national organization that deals with charities, both public and private, has um, a set of standards that they developed for community foundations. And so what these standards do is make sure that, a, that an organization is operating as they should be. And so we go through this process, review process, every five years. Um, and it talks about not only about how we operate, but who is involved, how grants are made, um, information, like I mentioned, available to the public, and just making sure that community foundations are using best practices. And we just went through this process and, and just got um, notification that our um, application has been accepted and, and reviewed and approved. Um, so that's something that we like to let donors know that um, we are operating on best practices and and it's really it boils down to this is a group of local people making decisions about local needs and so um, it's it's wonderful to be a part of and I, I know through the election process the word foundation may have gotten a bad rap but that's not community foundations and and we really enjoy working with people and our ultimate goal is to make sure that donors um, gifts are used as they as they want them to be and used to benefit our community as a whole. Um, so it, it's a wonderful organization to be a part of. If people have questions about anything the foundation does, um, we're more than happy to answer those questions, um, talk about um, some of the things we do specifically, or even talk about some of the details, the financial information or how we operate as a foundation. So um, it's, it's wonderful to be a part of. Excellent. So, well, we have with us today um, Jeff Finke, um, and Jeff is in a minute is going to talk a little bit about our grant process. Of course, we changed um, some things, some details about how that process has worked, but I want to mention leading into this, um, Giving Tuesday. Of course, you have Black Friday. I'm sure you're up early to participate participate in that, aren't you, Barry? I'm up early every day to um, come you, here. You are. You probably beat the Black Friday crowd most of the time. Then we have Small Business Saturday, and we have Cyber Monday. And so a few years ago, um, an effort has been created to start Giving Tuesday. And that's the day, that's the first Tuesday after Thanksgiving. And the idea is to focus on um, charitable giving on that day. We think about what kind of gifts people have have asked for. Um, we had a meeting yesterday and we had one person that said, I'm trying to convince my kids that I don't need any more stuff. <laughs> and so um, if, you ha if you're looking for a gift for somebody that already has mm -hmm. everything that they need, um, one thing that we always like to encourage people is maybe consider a gift to a fund within the foundation that um, may benefit something that they care about. It's a way to leave a lasting impact, and it's also a way to avoid giving somebody more stuff that they may not need. So, um, so on Giving Tuesday, this is the second year that we've done this. Um, it will be no Tuesday, November 29th. Um, we're going to be at our office from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, WROI will be there from about 9.30 to 10.30 broadcasting live, giving some updates. 
Um, but it'll be a time for people to come in and see a little bit about what the foundation has been doing over the past year. So if somebody's interested in, in what we've done, you don't have to be a donor, no requirements. Um, we'll have some snacks, some food over the lunch hour. Mm -hmm. I'd encourage folks just to drop by and, and say hi, um, learn a little bit more about the foundation. Um, something else that we will also be doing is we have um, $25,000 available for a dollar for dollar match to any of our community funds, which are the funds that make grants for community projects. Um, we were able to do this last year, and so we're, it was so successful, we're able to continue it again this year. So if, if somebody's considering a year-end gift and would like to give to a, um, specifically to a community fund, um, we have $25,000 available to match that. If somebody's considering creating a community fund, um, we'd love to talk to you either ahead of time or on that day to, to talk about how that would work. So um, with that, I kind of wanted to lead in with that. Um, Jeff Finke is our Grants Committee Chairman um, for Fulton County. Um, welcome, Jeff. Talk a little bit. Some, we did something new this year with our Grants Committee that we weren't sure was going to work out, and I think it's been a positive thing. But um, talk a little bit about the changes that we made in our grant process this year. Um, the, the biggest change that we made this year with the Grants Committee was the elimination of application deadlines. And the, the big advantage of eliminating the deadlines is we're able to respond much more quickly. So when a group comes to the Grants Committee with an application for a project, we're addressing that, we're reviewing it, we're approving it or not approving it, and they're getting their money to work on their project right away, as opposed to in the past, we've done it, you know, we've accumulated the, the grant applications throughout the year, and we don't really review them until the end of the year, and then, you know, maybe their project gets pushed back a whole year, waiting for the grant dollars to come through to proceed. So, that's been a huge shift, which has been a, an enormous benefit, we feel like, the Grants Committee feels like, in, in helping people get their good work done. So, so, if I'm understanding you right, throughout the year, if I had an idea for a project, I didn't have to wait until a grant deadline was available. I could go ahead and do that right now. Right. As the project comes up, you know, when when a you know a, a group, for example, the Promise Indiana people mm -hmm. uh, come and they they initiating this project in, within the schools, they they want to get going on it. They want to get started on it now. Well, we're able to to review that application and make that decision as a committee and and proceed it with it, it and grant the money out to them so they can get started. Okay, so so maybe give us an example um, of the dollar amounts that have been granted this year and I know we just ma recently made some grants. Sure, Give sure. us a little bit of information about both uh, of So far this year in, in community support grants and impact grants, we've granted out a total of $73,725, which is pretty amazing, I think. Um, the, the groups that we most recently uh, approved for grant applications were Promise Indiana for $10,000, the Akron Youth League, uh, to, to put some new sod on their field, we approved $4,000, the Akron Park Board for a disc golf course, we approved $3,000, and the Council on Aging needed some support to purchase a new transpo van, and we approved $8,000 for them so they can use that for matching and purchasing a new vehicle yeah and and so these are projects that are that are going on um, talk a little bit about some of the things that the grants committee as we go through the process considers when the grant application comes in well what the what the grants committee likes to see is the impact overall that it's going to have on the community um, we, we, we like to see it benefit as many people as possible uh, these these particular, uh, the, the ones that I've just mentioned, Promise Indiana, Akron Youth League, Akron Park Board, Council on Aging, those are, those are groups that actually affect the entire county. Um, there's a lot of activity there, a lot of people participating in, with those groups. So you know, those, those are things that the Grants Committee felt really strongly about, very supportive of. And something else that we've um, started doing the last couple of years is um, something that we've called sustainability awards. I know there were two organizations this year that received those. Maybe talk just a little bit about, first of all, what is a sustainability award, and then specifically about the groups that um, 
are receiving those this year? Sure, a, a sustainability award uh, is, is something that we present to a group that is always going to need more money. Uh, you know, when it, when it really comes down to it, they can get a grant for a specific project, but there's always going to be a need for more funds to do more good work. Um, and in this particular, this year in particular, the Kiwana Union Township Library uh, and the Fulton County Pack a Backpack Program were uh, awarded sustainability uh, awards f so that they could continue with the good work that they do. Um, you know, those are these are both groups that that have you know specific projects that they need to fund, but they're always going to need more money down the road. This this helps them out by presenting them with something they can contribute to and have donors contribute to so that they can further their causes. So maybe this is a, a long-term solution for them so that they don't necessarily have to go out looking for grants every year if the, the funds grow. Hopefully so it is, yes. And, and something else to mention, of course, this is the, the fourth year that we've helped provide preschool projects. I was just looking at some numbers this last year and that program has grown. Um, this year, we so far, we've been able to help 26 children be a part of that program um, and that's something that we've also had from our, our community support grant dollars as well so um, talk um, just a little bit about um, as we as we look at these funds um, I know we have Giving Tuesday come up um, how do, where do these dollars for these grants come from uh, well, the dollars come from uh, from from donors from from what's uh, from people reaching out to to support their community, which I think is pretty pretty amazing. This is a very giving uh, county. Um, people in Fulton County are very generous, and and you know they recognize good things going on, and they want to contribute to it and further that. And and as somebody on the grants committee, um, I'm just going to ask your impression of of anything that stands out to you that the foundation has done grant-wise um, through the past few years, um, just as somebody that's experienced this process on the funding end of things. It, it's been it's been pretty amazing. We've had a we've had a good run on the, the on the, the grants committee with a lot of good projects. I feel like we we have supported more than we have had to turn down. Um, but but there's there's been a lot of good projects throughout the county. I think that's that's really impressive and needs to be noted. You know we're not focusing on one community, but we're helping the entire Fulton County community. Um, it you know it, a, a full gamut of different types of projects, from parks to you know the Chamber of Commerce to Leadership Academy. Uh, it, it's a it's a really broad spectrum of yeah. of who we're reaching out to help. And, and as a community member, I'd like to thank you as um, somebody that sits down and looks at these grants, makes the decisions. People always chuckle when I say it's hard to give money away. It's not because it's difficult finding good projects, it's because there's so many good projects in our community that really can use the support. So There really is. So thank you, Jeff, for joining us today um, and talking a little bit about the grants. Um, just to kind of wrap up what we've talked about today. Um, of course, the Promise Indiana, the 529 savings account, if, if somebody's interested in helping with that, um, give us a holler. Um, the Honeywell Foundation, their endowment fund, if you're interested in supporting that and um, being part of their match, we'd love to talk to you on that. And of course, the, the big thing coming up, Giving Tuesday, mark your calendars, November 29th from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, we hope that People will have a chance to drop by and say hi to us, find out a little bit about what the foundation's been doing throughout the past year, and um, we always love to love to say thank you to folks who have made this possible. Because, um, as Jeff said, this is a very giving community. Um, we prove that over and over again, and it's because we have a giving community that we have dollars to support these needed causes in our community and. Um, in an ongoing way. So it's wonderful to see how our community rallies around the needs. So, Excellent. If folks are interested in anything we talked about today, um, you can always find us online, nicf.org. Um, like us on Facebook under Northern Indiana Community Foundation. If you're on Facebook, look for some updates leading up to Giving Tuesday. We'll have some information on there. Um, 
you can give us a call, 224-3223, or stop by our office here at 715 Main Street in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about anything that you may have going on or even talk to you about an end-of-year gift or being part of Giving Tuesday. All right, very good. Thank you, gentlemen, very kindly for your time. We appreciate it as always, and I know the listeners do as well. Thank you, Barry. Thank you. Have a great day. It is now 10 o'clock at 92.1 WROI.